asoma, asoma. <laughs> so guys, today we are going to look at blood transfusion and even before we embark on that, we are going to briefly try to understand the functions of blood cells and what it entails the blood. Now, if you may remember that the, function, the main function of red blood cell is to transport oxygen and the function of white blood cell is to fight pathogenic uh, microorganisms that causes uh, diseases in our bodies and the platelet is blood clotting and without forgetting blood plasma it uh, transports carbon four oxide and hence the flow of blood to the entire body after it has been pumped you like that <laughs> Yeah, I know you like that. It's that subscribe button. To start this tutorial by first of all defining uh, blood transfusion. Blood transfusion is the transfer of blood from donor. Donor is the person that gives blood to the bloodstream of the recipient, and the recipient is the person who receives the blood. So, one reason as to why blood transfusion can be done, it's can be done when an individual has lost excess blood due to either accident, uh, disease or illness, or probably during childbirth. So we know that a body as a way of uh, recovering the lost blood, but the process is takes a lot of time, and therefore a doctor may require to do blood transfusion so that to quicken the recovery of uh, loss blood. So guys, uh, research has been made and uh, it has been indicated that out of four people, one person requires blood transfusion. Mark you, those are a lot of people. They are a lot of people. So this topic is very important because we are going to look at blood transfusion why is it necessary? Who can receive and from who? Blood transfusion is successful when the recipients accept the blood that is donated without agglutination. That is, if the recipient cannot produce antibodies corresponding to donors' antigen. As soon as that gets. <laughs> so, blood transfusion becomes successful if the antigen of donor is not agglutinated by the blood by the by antibody in the blood plasma of the recipient so those are the basic things that we are going to look at when we are dealing with the blood transfusion and this table is going to help us analyze that and make it simple for us to understand now this uh, donor could be a person with brand group a or blood group B, or blood group AB, or blood group O. And recipients, whoever is receiving the blood could be blood group A, blood group B, blood group AB, or blood group O. So, now suppose a donor has a blood group A, and you want to give blood to a recipient with blood group A. So, what will happen? Uh, in donor, we are going to consider the antigens and in the recipient, we are going to consider the antibodies. Brand group A has antibody B. If they are corresponding with the antigen of the donor, a mutilation will take place. Alright? But now, looking at this donor giving to this recipient, we have antigen A of donor and antibody B of recipient. So, they are not matching and therefore this blood transfusion is acceptable. So, it means this one can give blood to that one. So, we say acceptable. What if the donor has blood group B and want to donate to a recipient with blood group A? So, the antibody of the recipient is matching with the antigen of the donor. So, there will be antigen 
antibody a reaction which will cause agglutination and therefore this these two groups are not compatible so a donor in brand group B with brand group B cannot donate to a recipient with brand group A because they have corresponding antigen antibody so it is not acceptable what if the donor has brand group A, B and you want to donate blood to the recipient of the brand group A. It means that the antibody in the blood plasma of this person has is B and it will agglutinate the antigen in the donor's brand B. So it is not also acceptable. What if now the donor is in brand group O and want to give the recipient to the brand group A? Remember that brand group O has zero antigens. So there is no antigen present to be agglutinated by the antibody B. So it means this person can give blood. Now let us look at the same donor with brand group A donating blood to brand group B. So the recipient has antibody A and the donor has antigen A. So the corresponding antigen antibody will cause agglutination and therefore it is not possible. What if uh, the donor is brand group B and we know that the antibody in the recipient is A so there will, no, there will not be any agglutination so it is possible. What if the donor is brand group AB and want to give a recipient with brand group B? So this antigen A will agglutinate, this antibody A, sorry, will agglutinate antigen A in the donor's uh, blood and therefore it will cause agglutination not acceptable. A um, uh, donor with brand group O and donated brand to B of course, brand group O doesn't have any antigen, so there is no antigen to be agglutinated by antibody A, so the blood will be accepted. Let's look at the same case when we are donating to a recipient with AB. A will give blood to AB because remember, this brand group lacks anti body to agglutinate antigen A. So it is acceptable. The same case, blood group B, blood from the donor with blood group B will accept it, will be accepted because this group doesn't have antibodies to agglutinate antigen B. So it will be accepted. And A B and A B can donate to each other because they doesn't have antibody to agglutinate any antigen, so it is acceptable. Now, suppose suppose a donor has brand group O and want to donate a uh, blood to a recipient with the brand group AB. Okay, in this brand group, there is no antibodies to agglutinate, no antigen, so it means. The blood is accepted. What about this case scenario whereby a donor has brand group OA and wants to donate blood to a recipient with brand group O? Remember, brand group O doesn't have antigen, but it has both antibodies. Now let's see. This antigen will be agglutinated by this antibody A. So it will agglutinate and not acceptable. What about a donor with brand group B willing to donate a brand to a recipient with brand group O? The antibody B will, will uh, the antibody B will agglutinate antigen B. So it is not acceptable. How about AB wanting to donate brand to a recipient with O uh, brand group O? The antigen A will agglutinate with anti the antibody A will agglutinate with antigen A and the antibody B will agglutinate to antigen B and it will 
cause a massive antigen antibody uh, reaction so this one is not acceptable how about donor with brand group O donating brand to brand group O so there is no antigen in this group to be agglutinated by A and B so it is acceptable aha I know now you're starting modern my god which brand group do I have that doesn't matter so much so there is something from this table I can see something I don't know whether you can see what I am seeing aha look at this point people with the same blood group can donate blood to each other comfortably so if brand group A can donate blood to brand group A brand group B can donate blood to brand group B brand group AB can donate blood to brand group AB and brand group O can donate blood to brand group O and another thing that you can note is that blood group AB is receiving blood from all the four blood groups so it can receive blood from blood group A it can receive blood from blood group B from blood group AB and from blood group O so in this case these people are known as universal universal recipients how, how about I can see something else persons with blood group O can donate blood they can donate blood to all the four blood groups so it can donate blood to blood group A to blood group B to blood group AB and to blood group O. So this one, this is universal recipient is brand group AB and these ones are known as universal universal donor. That is brand group O. Now for this case to be universal donor it has to be O negative because when it is O positive it will not donate blood to any blood group with positive or rensers positive because it will cause and uh, it will cause the production of rensers factor antibodies and therefore a blood group to be universal recipients then this one must be a b positive if it is negative then it ceases uh, to be universal recipient if this one is positive it ceases to be universal donor so that is why we say that you uh, universal recipient that is someone with brand group a b negative it is a very rare blood and that is why we encourage people to keep uh, donating blood for such people because they die because of lack of blood and at the same time universal donor with a uh, positive versus positive ceases to become a universal donor because the rhesus factors will cause uh, some antibodies to the person receiving the blood i know at this point you are wondering my god am i a b am i o b am, am i a b am i a am i b so it is good to know your blood group because you can either save life or you can be saved.